I'm here at Spokane in eastern Washington state, right in the northwest of the United States. And today I'm going to be taking one of the great train journeys of the world. I'm taking Amtrak's Empire Builder train, which is a train that takes over two days to go from here right the way across to Chicago in Illinois. I'm really looking forward to seeing the real scenery of America on this two day train ride. So let's head inside and head to Chicago. The Empire Builder leaves Spokane heading east and passes almost immediately into northern Idaho. When we wake up in the morning, we're in Montana, crossing the Glacier National Park. The ground gets flatter as we head towards the plains of eastern Montana. We arrive into Minot, North Dakota just before bedtime, and when we wake, we've crossed into Minnesota and down to Minneapolis. The last day is spent following the Mississippi down into Wisconsin before heading across to Milwaukee and south into Illinois, where we arrive into Chicago late in the afternoon after a journey time of 40 hours. Amtrak's trains can run several hours late. This evening was no exception with the Seattle section of the train running around two hours late. I'd recommend keeping an eye on Amtrak's tracking map and staying in your hotel or accommodation until around an hour before your train is due. Amtrak stations aren't often well equipped with facilities and we opted to send the kids to bed early before getting them up and grabbing an Uber which got us there around 20 minutes before the train arrived in the middle of the night. Hello there, good evening. Oh, people coming all the way. Wow, these guys are really <laughs> traveling on their own. <laughs> guys, thank you. Thanks, you too. We arrived at the station just after midnight and checked in our bags to Chicago. It's a pretty manual process, so you can check in right up until around 20 minutes before your train leaves. Fortunately, our room tonight was in the Portland section of the train, but had already arrived, so we could get into our rooms and get the kids to sleep within a few minutes of arriving at the station. So what, Sam? Service. Yeah, 2830, all right, yeah. go room then. Uh, we are, where are we? Nine and 10. Nine and 10? Yeah. So you're gonna make a right? Yeah. Go to the top of the steps, make another right. It's gonna be the last two rooms, nine and 10. Lovely, thank, thank you, you very much. Welcome. Are you letting me right. go first then, thank yeah? You. You're welcome, no problem. Thank you. We headed on board and up to our rooms. It's really late at night. We are in the section that's coming from Portland. That section's on time, thankfully. Uh, the other section is the section that comes from Seattle and that section is delayed, so we have to wait here. Spokane is the point at which the Empire Builder either splits into two trains or merges from two trains into one at Spokane. There are two lines, one heading across to Seattle and one heading southwest down to Portland, Oregon. We're in a little roomette on this train. Oh, we have two roomettes actually. Me and Sam are in this one. Say hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. And... Rach and Anna are across the hall in another room just over there. They're over in room 10. The room is pretty compact. It's really small, but it's still pretty comfortable. We have a double bunk bed here. I will show more around this in the morning when we have a bit of daylight, hopefully. And Sam is strapped in up there with his netting to stop him from falling out and suffering an ungraceful wake up in the morning, which you don't really want, do you? I'm gonna try and get some sleep. We're gonna fall asleep here in Spokane and see where we wake up in the morning. As we settled down in bed, the Seattle section of the train arrived. I'd fallen asleep by the time we left Spokane. We've woken up, it's a beautiful day here in Montana now. We've traveled quite some distance overnight. It's now quarter past nine in the morning, local time. It was just a few moments ago, left the station at West Glacier. It is absolutely stunning out there this morning, beautiful views. We're not gonna head down for breakfast um, just yet. I mean, we've probably missed breakfast for today now. The dining car is kind of six cars that way, with Rach having damaged her foot quite badly, her ankle, while we were in Washington. Uh, we're not quite sure how that's gonna work. It's 
now. Quarter past 11 in the morning and we're just kind of cruising across Montana at the minute if you look out the window. We've put the beds down. Um, the, there is a cabin manager that will come through and do all that for you but she's been very busy with other things so we've done it ourselves. Just put so the upper bunk as you can see just folds away like that and these seats here push up now. Um, you kind of have to lift the back and there's like a little um, foot press there that you do that puts the seat down into its life flat position or puts it back up into its seat. So when the bunk's away, as you can see, we've got two little seats here that sit facing each other, very comfortable seats. And you can see there are the other steps as well that you use up to the uh, upper bunk uh, when it comes to doing that. So let's have a little look around the roomette here on the Amtrak Empire Builder. And either end of the cabin, you have these little lighting console things. There is an air conditioning setting here, which I've got set to cold, and a, lot, a plug socket there that you can charge things with, which I am using with my 4K extension as I usually do when I'm abroad. It's, there's a little table here that pops out, safety card. The table pops out like so. On the other side here, we have um, options, so we've got a pull to call button that calls the train manager, and then we have these lights here. So we have the option of the ceiling light and the night light. If we flick it onto ceiling light, it turns that light on. And on night light mode, it puts it as a blue light, which is really nice to have in the evening when it's dark out and it gives you a nice little dim light. These settings here as well do the controls for the music, it says music control, but actually what it does is the um, announcements that come through. And I'd recommend that if you um, get on board a train like this, you first thing you do if you want to get to sleep is turn all of those volumes down to zero because in the ceiling there is a speaker and otherwise you're going to get woken up at six o'clock in the morning by all the announcements for breakfast and the next stations and things. So first thing to do when you get on the train, turn that volume right down. So we've got a little mirror up there as well. There's a closet here on this side that opens very small. There's not much storage, by any complaints really. There isn't much storage in these little rooms. Um, bags kind of go under the seats, but it's difficult to get hold of things. You can see we've just got bags scattered all around the uh, room. It's pretty difficult to find space to put everything. Uh, if we look up here as well, we've got the all the lighting controls for the upper bunk, so they've got their own lighting and everything. Air conditioning comes through here. The door on these units slides across. So we have a sliding door. You can see that Rachel's got her door slid across and it just slides across like so and latches. And then we have curtains that come across so that we get a little bit of privacy in the evening if that's what we want to do in the sport. Generally what we've been doing is keeping the door shut and the curtains across. I found that it gets a little bit stuffy in the um, daytime as well or even in the evening with that door shut because the air conditioning is good but it's not that great and we get a nice draft coming down that corridor so it's nice to get the draft coming through with the door open. So all in all it's not a bad little room here. It's pretty decent. It's, it looks very compact but it is. it does have everything you need. We booked a table for lunch at 11.30am. Lunch is served from 11.30 onwards and finishes at about 2pm. Tables are in high demand though and by the time the dining staff had come to our room to take the reservation we only had 11.30 left. The dining car was six cars away and in between us were several coach cars. I wouldn't recommend taking a coach ticket on this train at all. The seats didn't look a comfortable place to spend two days and nights in and it was really noisy and hot too. The observation car is an incredible space with floor to ceiling windows and comfy seats. You can spend hours here watching the world go by. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so how are you guys enjoying the train so far? Uh, good, thank you. Are you Bye. enjoying it? Fine. We are with lunchtime on day two. And we're doing a drawing contest. And we're doing a drawing contest in the dining car. Yes. Nana's is pretty cool. I mean, that's amazing. You can draw on the tablecloths and they don't mind. So we're going to have some food. The kids were given some cool DIY trains to build. Passengers in the sleeper cars get three meals a day included in their ticket. 
breakfast, lunch and dinner on each day. You also get non-alcoholic drinks included or you can pay for a glass of wine if you fancy it. Rach adopted to stay back in the room and ordered room service which is also an option. The food on Amtrak was pretty good indeed, I'll cover dinner later on but for lunch today I took the natural Angus burger which was really tasty. As we ate lunch we passed through Shelby Montana. Like many towns in this part of the world it has an old wild west feel to it and even has a saloon. After lunch we headed back through the train to the sleeper section. As we were pretty close to the back of the train it was really easy to get to the back window and see the railroad disappearing behind us. While I enjoyed watching the view the kids were quite content playing games on their phone. Yep. Just after lunch we hit the first fresh air stop of this trip, Hava Montana. Alright so we're here at Hava Montana in northern Montana. It's named after La Havre in France and it's home to the world's biggest tractor so there is your piece of trivia for Havre Montana. It's also really hot, it's up in the 30s today. So quick fresh air break here outside of the train in the heat and then we're going to get back inside and get on our way. <laughs> Havre is a crew change spot and the crew that remained on board had KFC waiting for them when they got off. As we left Havre we saw this cool looking old steam engine at the side of the platform. East of Haver we passed into a passing point to let our sister train, the westbound Empire Builder, go past. We passed through some seemingly deserted towns in northern Montana interspersed with miles of nothingness. The tracks in Montana and North Dakota are very bumpy indeed and it was difficult to even stand up at times. The tracks are operated by BNSF and are primarily freight lines but Amtrak have an agreement to operate the Empire Builder once a day in each direction. It really is fascinating stopping in tiny towns that you've never heard of before with seemingly barely anyone living in them. Downstairs in the observation car is a cafe in a little shop where you can grab light snacks and drinks to take back to your room. It was soon dinner time and we made our way down the train to grab our dinner. You have to fill in these cards with your room number on and can then order anything on the menu. Tonight I took the Amtrak signature steak which is in my experience the nicest item on the menu. It really is a delicious steak and much nicer than any of the rest of the menu. Salmon. Salmon, green beans, mashed potato and, so and sauce of the day. What's and mac and cheese, green beans and a piece of lemon. As the sun got lower in the sky, the plains were interrupted by intermittent rocky outcrops. We entered North Dakota and stopped at Williston, our first stop in the state. As we headed further east, a huge storm was brewing on the horizon. We stopped briefly at Stanley, North Dakota before the sun started to set as we headed closer to the city of Minot. The storm was right overhead Minot and as we sat in the station we were treated to an amazing lightning storm. With the thunder rumbling and the rain hitting the roof of the train it wasn't long before I fell asleep. I woke up in Minneapolis where we just left the city's central station. 
Right, last morning of the Empire Builder train. Just woken up in Minneapolis and we're just kind of cruising. This beautiful scenery that we have here, just to the south of Minneapolis. From here we head across to Wisconsin today, through Wisconsin Dells, and then down into Chicago, where we're due to arrive at about four o'clock this afternoon, but I think we're a little bit behind schedule still at the moment, although we have made up quite a bit overnight. One thing I will say about Amtrak is that the blankets you get for sleeping are really thin and don't keep you particularly warm. I was glad to have taken my weighted blanket that YNM very kindly sent me. It's a really nice blanket that's lightweight but still feels like a full duvet and keeps you incredibly comfortable. It fits nicely in your hand baggage and on this trip it kept me warm and snug just like at home. Check out the link to this down below, I really do highly recommend it for when you're out travelling. We followed the course of the Mississippi River down the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin. So here then in Winona, Minnesota, it's the last fresh air break on this service. So I figured I'd have to come outside and at least see some fresh air before we do the last six hour ride down to Chicago. Most of the people in the sleeper car have got off at either Minneapolis or stopped before that. So there's only us in the sleeper car now. The coach class, however, is filling up fast as we get closer to Chicago. And they said that by the time we hit Wisconsin Dells later on today, the coach carriage will be absolutely rammed so I'm pretty pleased that we're down here in the quiet sleeper cars at the end of the train. After leaving Winona we cross the Mississippi River into Wisconsin where our first stop is La Crosse. Just after 3pm we rolled into the city of Milwaukee. So we're in the last few hours of the train ride now across the country to Chicago, Illinois. Loads of people have asked me why would we take a train that takes over 40 hours, nearly two days to go across the country when you can get a plane that would do it in a fraction of the time. My response to that is that it's the same reason that people take a cruise when they could fly in just a few hours. It's not about how quickly you get there, it's about enjoying the journey and having a relaxing time on the way. Yes, it's taken two days to get across the country, but also we have seen some of the most incredible scenery. We've been through some of the most beautiful parts of America, places that we would never dream about visiting in a million years. Little towns in the middle of Montana and North Dakota, right outside of your window. It's just incredibly cool. We crossed our final state line of the trip and rolled into Illinois. The famous skyline of Chicago appeared on the horizon and welcomed us into our final destination.
headed straight to the baggage claim where our bags appeared in around 20 minutes. Here then at the beautiful Chicago Union Station in Chicago, Illinois, after our ride over from Spokane, Washington on the Empire Builder Amtrak train. It was an absolutely incredible journey, really enjoyed every minute of that, all 40 hours of it across the entire of the USA from Washington State right the way across to here. It was an incredible way to see America up close and personal right outside the window as well. Let me know what you think to the Amtrak Empire Builder train down in the comment section below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time here on In Flight Video.